everyone. I hope I'm audible. Yes. Great. Uh, thank you for uh, you know quickly having your teas and coffees and bringing some in if possible, uh, and uh, coming out here to listen to me. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about how do we actually drive total rewards uh, if we are running a hybrid organization. Before I start off uh, my session, uh, on every seat, we have put some thank you cards. So we're going to do a quick, fun uh, thing today. Uh, not right now, but throughout the day. So in every one seat, there are a set of thank you cards. Uh, so if you meet somebody today in the event, uh, and you like them, or not me, anybody else, you like them and you like their session or you like interacting with them, just write a handwritten note and give them that thank you card. And just observe what is the power of appreciation. If you're meeting a random stranger today and a random person you're giving a thank you card to and you see that smile on, your, on their faces, you identify uh, that you know what would happen if you're doing this for your colleagues, if you're doing it for your team members, right? Uh, so just do that today. If you need more thank you cards, they're more available at our booth. But please do that today and identify you know how people's faces just light up when you give them a appreciation card. So uh, let's first talk about pay. You know, being not a centerpiece today, and how you know pay is something which can be easily matched by other organizations. But there are other things which have come up as the new employee age checklist, right? So today's employees beyond salaries, they want a better culture in their organization. They want autonomy in the kind of work which they can do. They don't want to be like those yes men and yes women in the company who are just being told what to do and they're just doing it. They want more growth opportunities uh, where they feel that, okay, I'm making an impact in the company and uh, you know, I'm also growing and I'm uh, kind of uh, getting the right sort of uh, rewards for it. They want the right tools to help them grow as well. They want uh, a complete set of help from their organizations in terms of growth. They also want purpose uh, that why am I here? You know, why am I working here? What is the objective and what is my purpose in life? And eventually they want recognition. Uh, so we're typically going to focus on the recognition piece today and talk about how you can build total rewards if you're running a hybrid scenario. So there are four steps of doing this and I've split my presentation across these four steps itself. The first is you have to identify what exactly is that your employees need. Once you've identified your employee needs, then you need to execute recognition basis their needs. Once you've executed recognition, then you have to also understand who owns what part of that particular uh, you know, entire structure which you're running. And once you've understood those recognition opportunities and responsibilities, you have to analyze results, you have to identify ROI, you have to figure out whether the initiatives which you've run are actually working or they're just initiatives for the namesake of it. So first, let's talk about identification of employee needs. So, you know, we always talk about Maslow's hierarchy, and this is like an employee version of that. Uh, so if you think about it, like our grandparents' generation, they used to primarily work for survival. Our parents' generation, it moved a little where, you know, they started working for security. But today's millennia, today's Gen Z, or whatever names you want to call it, they work for something more. Uh, so that's, that's how the Maslow's hierarchy for employee engagement is built in. That if you are only working for survival, or today if you're only working for security, there is a high chance that you are disengaged in the organization. To be actually engaged in the organization, uh, if you are feeling that you belong to that organization and that feeling of belongingness starts coming in, you become a level of engaged, uh, you know, almost engaged, I would say, in the organization. The second level of engagement on top of it is importance. When you start feeling that your work matters, when you feel that I'm important in this company and if I say take a leave for a month, things are gonna go haywire out here, right? So that is where you start feeling important in the organization and that's where you actually become engaged in the company. And the topmost level of engagement is self-actualization. This actually happens with only high flyers, with a very small percentage of people in the company who become very highly engaged, who start thinking that, okay, I am getting what I need from the organization, let me also help others. Let me help the company grow, let me help other people grow, and that's how you reach the highest level of engagement, which is self-actualization. Belongingness, importance, and self-actualization are three very major factors which drive engagement for an employee, and recognition is the right way to drive the, all of the three to actually bring better engagement. So today, if you think about it, uh, there was an uh, overall survey done by Towers Perrin, Gallup, uh, you know, State of Work, and they uh, identified that 
90% of companies actually feel that they are recognizing their employees. They are actually rewarding them for the right pieces. But if you talk to employees, only 40% of employees actually feel that you know, they have been properly recognized. And 65% of employees say that they have received no recognition in the past one year. So if you are having 65% of people in your organization who feel they're not getting adequately recognized, naturally that's going to impact attrition, that's going to uh, you know, reduce retention rates in the company. And ever since we've moved to a hybrid work from home, you know, half of the people are working from home, half of the people are working from work, half of the people are working from cabs, some are working from Goa, some are working from Rishikesh. It has become really, really harder to engage employees and make them feel that, okay, they really, really belong to a true sense of purpose and they're driving, uh, you know, something together towards a common purpose in the organization. So, uh, typically, if I think about the predicators of overall job satisfaction, what does job satisfaction mean to me as an employee, right? So, there are six parts to it which you can actually divide. The first is morale. So the extent to which I actually feel that I enjoy the work myself, it builds my morale in the organization and thereby drives higher job satisfaction. Second is, of course, recognition, where I feel that my company is fair in recognizing me for the work done and my managers are not biased. Everybody is not just playing favorites out here, but there is a fair set of recognition strategy being set in place. Third is I feel responsible towards my organization and I'm performing well. I feel my job is stimulating, I feel my job is interesting, and what I'm doing really matters. Fourth is service quality. Now, here I talk about pride in the workplace. There is a difference between pride in work and pride in workplace. You might love your work, but you might hate your company. You might love your company, but you might hate your work. So there are a lot of people who come up with uh, statements like, I am X ABC company, I am X XYZ company. I always say I'm ex-Microsoft. Why do I do that? Because I feel pride in the workplace of Microsoft, right? So that comes also as a particular job satisfaction area. Fourth is a sense of belongingness, where you feel that the company values my work, my inputs are taken into consideration, my feedback is taken seriously, and I'm really valued in the organization. Fifth is, uh, sorry, sixth is uh, uh, sense of esteem, self-esteem. Now, self-esteem is where, um, you know, you have a self-perception of how people actually perceive you. When you wake up in the morning and you go to work, you have a sense of uh, thought process that, okay, this is how I am perceived at work. And if I feel personally that I am perceived positively at work, it builds up my self-esteem. If I feel that everybody around me is trying to sabotage me or there is politics in the organization, it reduces my self-esteem. So that also adds significantly to job satisfaction. Now, we've understood what employees need to talk, spoken about job satisfaction, we've spoken about Maslow's hierarchy, belongingness, importance, recognition. Now, how do you drive recognition? Typically, if you're in a hybrid model setup, the whole uh, ideology to drive the right form of recognition is digitization. And I cannot emphasize that enough because you don't have everybody in the same place in the office together. So you have to digitize your entire recognition model so that, you know, hybrid teams, so that people who are anywhere can actually interact with each other and there is a way that they are appreciated in the right manner. You have to replace all your physical gifts, your physical goodies with digital gifts. You could do vouchers, you could do reward points, you could do a lot of things where you don't have to physically courier stuff to people. You have to replace your physical awards and trophies with digital uh, badges. You have to replace your physical certificates with these certificates and uh, overall you have to also automate everything in terms of rewarding. Wherever you could automate, you should automate. Now we talk about birthdays, anniversaries, long service. These are all recurring events in employee lives. There is no need to manually do this, right? You could just have a system, run a script where every day people having their birthdays are getting recognized. There is no manual dependency on a single human being who's at leave and maybe 100 people don't get their birthday awards. So you should automate wherever you can. You should integrate with your CRMs if you're doing sales incentives, with ERPs, with attendance management systems if you are doing uh, you know, attendance-based awards. Wherever you have an opportunity to automate, you should automate because it will drive things much more smoother. Recognition is typically divided in four parts, bases, according to what we've seen overall in most of the organizations. One is day-to-day, -day, second is formal, third is informal, and the fourth is approval-based. So I'm going to talk about each one of them really quickly. Day-to-day -day recognition is 
like the name suggests, day to day. It is not really associated with any of your uh, additional, uh, you know, kind of any specific thing you've done in the organization which makes you get that award. It is something which you get it because you have a birthday or you've completed five years in the company or there is an engagement activity running in the organization. Formal recognition is more formal in nature. Typically, it's divided in three parts. One is awarding based on KRAs or certain objectives, where, you know, say, a client gives a better feedback, you get an award related to that, or you've done some sort of innovation, you get an award related to that, you've referred an employee in the company, you get an award, and so on and so forth. Structured recognition is more structured in nature, where it's driven by budgets and it's driven by managers. So here you can actually empower your management to drive different rewards for different employees. You can give them certain budgets they can utilize. It is linked to your cultural values, it is linked to the objectives and the goals of the company. And here everybody knows that, okay, if I do these 10 things, I will get rewarded. Third is significant rewards for significant achievements. These are, you know, high flyer awards. When you're doing something extraordinary, which is above and beyond the call of your duty, that is where you get those CEO awards, their employee of the year awards, and all of those, which are overall coming under formal recognition. Informal recognition is informal in nature. Informal recognition can be split in three parts. One is around peer recognition, where peers are giving, uh, you know, thank yous or kudos and all of those things to each other, which typically helps in positive cultural building. Peer recognition is important to also, you know, kind of uh, drive a way in which everybody is thanking each other, everybody is saying nice things to each other, because as human beings, we're always hungry for appreciation. If somebody helps me in uh, my project and I give them a thank you card, the next time I go to them for help, they will be more warm towards me because as human beings, they're naturally driven to get more appreciation. Second is around celebrations where, you know, you have all your celebratory things, your life events, any sort of Diwali gifting and all of those things which come under celebrations. And third is around the social aspect of informal recognition itself, where if my manager has given me an award, only he and I know about it, it's great. But if the entire company or my entire team knows about it, it's amazing. So it is also important to create a social aspect to it, where you are also publicizing it, you're creating virtual walls of fame or halls of fame or whatever, and you're kind of driving those uh, social recognition aspects also in your company. Approval based is a little different. Approval based is where you're not giving the autonomy to managers to actually award. You are taking nominations from them and then you have an approval matrix. You have a maker checker model where the checkers are gonna actually determine whether this person is getting an award or not. In approval based, it's really important to keep things simple. Like once we launched with a client um, in the MENA region who built 13 approval processes. So when somebody gets nominated, I nominate my peer, approval one approves, then approval two approves, then approval three approves, and this goes on till 13 people, and when the 13th person approves is when the person gets the award. Naturally, in the first one month, they had to revert it back to two to three approvals because it was not happening. So it's also important to keep it simple. Keep those uh, checks and balances, keep admin overrides so that the HR team can step in if required and you know award if it's stuck on one single person or one single team. Now you've understood how do you drive recognition, how do we then divide the responsibilities in terms of driving recognition because creating a program is one thing, running a program is completely another. So this is like one of my favorite research studies which I use in a lot of my talks uh, where the American Management Association had done uh, a research around what employees feel in terms of job satisfaction and what the managers feel in terms of job satisfaction. If you think about it, for an employee ranking, credit or recognition for the work being done ranks as number one as a job satisfaction parameter. Job security, ironically, is the last option for me. For their managers, managers actually felt that job security is the second most important thing for an employee, whereas recognition is the second last important thing for an employee. So that's the amount of difference in mentalities which is there between what an employee thinks and what their manager thinks. So for a minute, I will ask all of you to remove your HR head and CHRO hats and think from an employee's perspective. What exactly is it that you need from your organization that syncs with what exactly your employees will need too? Uh, one of the things I want to talk about is why recognition is not just the HR department's job. There is a significant involvement from the rest of the leadership and the management as well to drive recognition in the right manner because only the HR team cannot drive it in the correct way. 
culture always starts at the top leaders need to walk their talk they need to you know drive recognition themselves and not clump it with criticism that you know you did a great job uh, but you could have done x y z more better if you're saying people did a great job then just say they did a great job if you're saying you could have done this better you can add some recognition on top of it as well leaders also need to make cultural the one of their cultural values as feedback there is a huge difference between what a leader thinks and what an employee thinks by constantly taking feedbacks from the ground level up they will be able to understand the pulse of the organization and one of my favorites again most organizations wait till they have built their entire recognition policy and then they launch it a year later but you've lost significant talent within that one year so don't wait till you have that entire fully fledged thing running start with birthdays start with thank you cards you know something which is very basic which at least can continue driving recognition at that point of time from a management's perspective managers need to really really personalize recognition if i say a standard good job to everybody it doesn't mean anything but if i am personalizing that citation and i'm actually really saying what i feel about them like these thank you cards you have in your hands today if you give the same thank you card to everybody without any citation it wouldn't mean anything but if you've spoken to somebody and you write something personalized for them they will remember it or maybe keep it also with them otherwise they just throw it away in the dustbin right so it's important to also make it personal from a manager's perspective because if you think about it most people leave their managers they don't leave their companies uh management also needs to be empowered to empower others so they need to have the autonomy to give awards to give budgets at the same time it's important to also keep a check and balance on it uh that you know there isn't a lot of favoritism happening so there can be a lot of uh, you know checks built in inside tools like one manager can give x number of awards to the same person in a certain quarter but at the same time you're giving the autonomy to the managers to actually award what is the hr's influence on recognition the first and foremost responsibility of the hr team is to drive uh, the culture of the organization right so actually build a team who is driving the culture we've seen it many many times that there is a team which is built for culture building and then something is broken in recruitment or something is broken in lnd and the first team which gets dismantled is this culture team this team is really important for the you know rate of attrition and retention in your organization so it is important to keep that team intact second for an hr perspective it is important to train managers train leadership and train the employees in the right way so that they can actually utilize the framework which you have built and it's also important to keep it fresh uh you give the same thank you card over and over and over again people will get bored of it so it's important to keep creating different campaigns keep creating different sorts of interesting activities uh if there's a women's day you run a women's week drive this week you could run a men's week drive and all of those things you could do to keep things fresh so that people are constantly appreciating each other and of course as the hr team it's our responsibility to recognize ourselves as well if we are ourselves not using the programs which you built how can we expect other people to use it lastly you've run your recognition you have divided responsibilities now you need to identify whether this really worked or this didn't work for you so how do you analyze recognition results the first thing which you need to look at is the overall percentages of utilization happening in your recognition programs if your managers are distributing budgets to employees budget utilization needs to be at a minimum of 95% if people are using rewards use utilization of rewards need to be at least 90% nothing below that should be acceptable in any organization it is also important and again i really like this in which you can take feedback from people who are exiting your organization because in your exit interview the employee is the most unabashed the employee is the most honest about what they've really felt about an initiative and they will tell you the real feedback that whether this was really working or this was just a sham which was just there for the face value other things you can do is you can run esat scores you can run surveys also for esat scores i have an interesting tip typically what organizations do is they run the whole uh, year and end of the year they identify okay we did 92% esat scores instead of that set it like a sales process set up a target for the entire hr team that this year we have to do 90% 95% esat now your entire hr team is aligned to make your employees life happy for the entire year if you hit those numbers end of the year reward your hr team and next year increase that esat percentage target by a percent so that will really help you hit your numbers instead of waiting for the entire year and then thinking what we could have done better this year 
Another thing you can do is, uh, of course, take client feedback, happy customers are happy employees, uh, attendance absentee rates, retention rates. Again, in retention rates, the you can't identify that, okay, this program helped drive retention lesser, right? So you find out the cohort of users who have actually used your programs versus the cohort of users who have never used your programs. Now see the attrition rate here and see the attrition rate here. If this is better, that means your programs are working. Uh, so from a hybrid culture perspective, things have really, really changed today. All your physical trophies and certificates are out. They've been replaced by digital flexible options for people to pick and choose whatever they want. All your physical activities in office have been replaced by digitized communities, digitized games. Uh, I don't want like a standard gym membership. Uh, if you can see me, I don't go to the gym, but I have a stressful role. So if you give me an option to pick a meditation, I would pick that. So give me that flexibility to pick and choose what I want in wellness and you know, digitize wherever you can. I'll just end this session uh, with a small note that if you have to win the marketplace, you have to win the workplace first. Thank you so much for listening to me. My name is Smithy, and I'm one of the founders of Advantage Club. We have a booth out here. If you need any uh, help in terms of building r, &R policies or you just want to chat, you know, I would love to understand how you are driving recognition. No strings attached. You don't have to sign up with Advantage Club. But we'd just love to chat and understand what you all are doing. I'll be at the booth. Would love to talk to everyone. Or if you need more thank you cards, please do come over. Thank you.